2024 was probably the most significant year so far in terms of the practical application of large language models and other generative AI. So in this video, I'll do a recap of 2024 and the most important moments in AI. There was a lot to keep track of. So whether you missed it or just want to catch up and get up to speed with things to prepare yourself for 2025, here is my 2024 AI recap. So let's start right away with LLMs. I wanna to first touch on context windows. Context windows were one of the most important progress made in LLMs in 2022 and 2023. If you're not familiar with a context window, it's basically how much text you can send to an LLM to form its short-term memory which will then influence what it can generate as a result. Early LLMs had very small context windows on the order of a few thousand tokens, but the tail end of 2023 and early 2024, we finally started seeing models that were approaching 100,000 or 200,000 tokens in context. But in 2024, we didn't really see that much progress in context windows at all. All the new models have somewhere around 100 to 200,000 tokens in their context window. The exception to this is Google's Gemini models. Google developed their own in-house TPUs or tensor processing units, which are specifically designed to accelerate AI applications. And that's why they can offer one to two million tokens of context. But in general, the context window has sort of stayed static all year for most models. And the progress that we've made has been in the abilities and in the reasoning capabilities of these models. As a result, benchmarks have become pretty important in judging every new model that comes out. There are now lots of benchmarks out there. Uh, seems like every day there is a new benchmark created. So in the description of this video, I will link to something that will help you get up to speed with what benchmarks are out there for LLMs and for different applications. Obviously, benchmarks don't tell the full story. It doesn't mean that just because a model does really well in a benchmark that it will be really good at real world examples. So in terms of models then, let's first look at the closed source models. Leading the pack are OpenAI's O1 and GPT-40, Anthropic's Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which is especially being good at coding tasks, Google's Gemini models with 1.5 and 2.0 just coming out towards the tail end of this year. XAI's Grok has also been developing quite steadily and recently reached 2.0 state and is starting to compete with other closed source models as well. You may have seen also that OpenAI recently announced a brand new model called O3. Not sure why O1 jumped to O3 and skipped over O2, but hey, OpenAI has never been that great at naming their models. Just look at how the GPT series has progressed. But as of recording this video, O3 is not available publicly. So it's kind of too early to tell what kind of progress O3 will have made over O1's results. Okay, so let's move on to open source models. These have really been catching up with the closed source counterparts lately. We had Llama 3.1 released by Meta, particularly the 405 billion parameter model, which in benchmarks at least is showing to be quite promising compared to the closed source leaders of the pack. There's also the Quen models from Alibaba and also recently DeepSeek, which has dropped a new model in December 2024 called DeepSeek V3. And once again, achieving results that are pretty much on par with GPT-40 and above, I would say, especially in coding tasks, it's almost matching Claude 3.5 as well. So this is pretty exciting that we have open source models that are basically almost as good as the proprietary versions. In terms of running these at home, it's not super practical. You can do it if you have a, a top tier NVIDIA GPU or a MacBook M3 Max or higher, but the generation speed, the tokens per second is pretty low. You can use something like XOAI to chain a bunch of MacBooks or Mac minis together to run them faster as well. So there's some cool stuff happening in, in homebrewing these models and running them locally. But for the most part, you'll want to use open source models through an API like Grok. And I'm not talking about XAI's Grok with a K, I'm talking about Grok with a Q. Grok are quite unique in that they've developed their own custom hardware, custom ASICs, which are application specific integrated circuits, specifically designed for running LLMs at speed. And therefore they've generally been much faster than competitors in running these open source models in terms of generation speed. From LLMs, let's now move on to audio generation. If we look at music, for example, Suno and Udio are probably still the leaders of the pack. And they've got really good lately with the ability to upload lyrics, customize a genre or describe the type of music or the instruments present in what you're trying to generate. And the results 
You can still tell that they are AI generated, I would say, but they've got good enough, I think, to have applications in real world use cases. Some examples might be YouTube videos, uh, independent films or background music, even indie games, for example, might be a good use case for this kind of thing. And then moving on from music to voice, OpenAI and Google both released some pretty exciting real-time voice APIs recently. And that finally enables things like phone calls where you can call an AI and speak to them and maybe order something from a restaurant or vice versa. You could have your own AI agent call a restaurant to make a booking for you. And this was actually what OpenAI demoed when announcing this feature. How much would 400 chocolate cups? 400, are you sure you want 400? And Google, I think, really stepped up their game this year and showed some really incredible stuff with real-time voice and multimodal AI. So you can use your phone's camera, for example, to point it at things and ask the AI to describe it to you or explain something or ask questions about it. And a recent video also showcased how this could be integrated into glasses, for example. So when you're on the go, you could be asking for directions and you can be having conversations with the AI itself. Apart from OpenAI and Google, I would say the main player here is still Eleven Labs, and they have some pretty impressive stuff going on as well. The main one being text-to-speech and voice cloning, especially. So this space is pretty hot right now, so I can't wait to see what happens with these models baked more into apps and operating systems in the next year. Moving on quickly to image generation, I think 2024 again was one of the calmer years for image generation and most companies have shifted their focus from pure image generation to video generation, which sort of became possible about a year ago. An honorable mention though is the Flux models, which I think have repeatedly shown to generate much better quality, more realistic looking humans than competing models so far. Another one that's interesting here is Grok by XAI. They recently released Grok 2, which can generate images and many say it's on par with Flux. For a moment, I think it was in partnership with Flux itself, so it was using Flux's model, but since then they have developed their own image generation models as well. Otherwise, we have Midjourney as one of the main contenders here, and they finally moved away from using Discord as the main way to generate images. You can now log into their web app or download their app and generate images that way. All right, so moving on now to probably the, one of the most exciting things to happen in 2024, which is video generation. Now, video AI models have been around for maybe two years or so, but they were quite primitive until very recently. However, there have been quite a lot of advances in the past six months on this. There's a number of Chinese models like Kling and Minimax, and also Runway is a, an honorable mention for the models that have come quite far. Obviously, the biggest news was OpenAI's Sora finally getting the limelight. Unfortunately, the results are not as good as some people expected. There are some reviews that showcase strange behaviors and physics that don't quite make sense. And that's really the challenge with video generation. We as humans are programmed to expect things to work in a certain way because we have an innate understanding of physics. And that's exactly what the AI models need to do as well to convince us that what they're showing is real. There has been one breakthrough recently that Google has been teasing called VO2. I believe it's still in limited beta, so I haven't managed to test it out at all. But it seems to be the first model that maybe manages to simulate physics correctly enough to be convincing. So time will tell as this model gets released more widely whether this will finally open up video AI generation to be more practically usable. Okay, so I do just want to touch on tooling and software development. So using all these models that got released this year, there have been some pretty exciting new tools available to generate full stack apps much quicker than we could have done before. And 2024 was definitely the first time as a software engineer that I materially noticed the difference in how we started to develop software. So this area is pretty exciting and a lot is happening, starting with Vercel's V0. Vercel's been very heavily investing into AI and it's V0 tooling. V0 has made it possible to generate landing pages and eventually more full front-end apps that can be deployed directly onto Vercel uh, with just a few prompts. Next came Bolt and also Lovable shortly after. Bolt and Lovable are both quite similar in, in their approach. They're both quite general. They can generate all sorts of different full stack apps with different frameworks. And the main difference I would say is that Bolt is much more geared towards software engineers, whereas Lovable 
I think is intentionally taking a different stance and pitching their product more towards people who don't know how to code. So you can't even edit the generated code, for example. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of Lovable's approach here because as a software engineer, I want to see what's being generated. And I know that the models currently are just not good enough to generate a full complex app with no human intervention. Even reprompting the LLM to fix its own mistakes often puts you into this loop where something is broken and the LLM just cannot get itself unstuck. So I suspect that Lovable is going to be suffering from that same thing because under the hood, it's just using the same models that everyone else is using. There's been a lot of VS Code clones happening this year, uh, notably Cursor and Windsurf. Cursor is definitely leading the pack in terms of its AI features and popularity. Though I would say Windsurf probably has the best agent-like coding experience that I've seen although Cursor is catching up pretty quickly. Honorable mention here is Klein, which is more of a VS Code plugin, but tries to accomplish the same sort of thing that the VS Code clones are doing. And finally, in December, we saw Devin got unleashed at a price tag of $500 a month, which was pretty insane at the time. No one really saw this coming, I think, but in essence, it does make sense. They're trying to replace a junior software developer so the price is competing with maybe hiring someone rather than a tool that you're already paying for. But that obviously comes down to how well it works. And from the reviews I've seen, it's probably not gonna justify its price tag, especially compared to some of the other tools we just talked about, which do most of what Devon can do, but at $20 a month. And once again, all of these models are still prone to getting stuck or generating code that doesn't quite work and then just not being able to make progress from there. From what I've seen, Devin also suffers from this. So maybe in 2025, these problems will be fixed with the newer models like OpenAI's O3. And if that is the case, then I can totally see Devin being a huge value add to a lot of companies. But until that's the case, I just don't see anyone paying $500 a month for software that doesn't quite work. So I just want to end this with a cool open source project I saw recently called either Shortest or Short Test. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's essentially an AI driven way to write end-to-end -end front end tests. If you've ever written an end-to-end -end test using Playwright before, it's using the same technology under the hood, just making it a lot easier to construct the test because you can just instruct it in plain English what to be looking for. And Short Test was released by Antiwork and open source recently. So I'm excited to give that a try in early 2025 as well. And that's it, that's 2024 wrapped in terms of AI. Certainly the landscape is changing extremely quickly and it's quite difficult to keep up sometimes. If you found this video useful and it helped you get up to speed with all of this stuff, then please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a great new year and I will see you in the next video.